welcome pudding people to another episode of everybody loves pudding i'm your host ken seymour today i am terribly excited i don't know if you will see the trembling in my face as i get the rare opportunity to speak with an actor that i've wanted to speak with for quite some time the fabulous mr gabriel jarrett thank you for joining wow that is a great intro i love that <laughs> well love i that. i appreciate you being on uh, i have been a fan for quite some time uh, uh and we'll it's, it's, we'll get to we'll get to the the specifics of why in, in, in okay. a bit but i always like to um always like to start with with just kind of how you got into the industry because it, it, it kind of fascinate fascinates me a little bit your your father being a screenwriter yeah. the question pops into my head does that mean that the that the business was kind of an ever-present thing in your household, or was it just on the peripheral? Yes, is the answer um, uh, to both. Um, no, it, it was it was ever-present because I grew up in Malibu. I'm um, I, I'm a product of of being a, a, a you know a kid of the industry, and and Malibu's an industry town, and everybody you know is either a writer or a director producer actor sports figure or whatever um and then there were two poor families uh, i think by city charter you had to have two poor families in malibu uh, <laughs> mine was one um but uh, and, you know until my dad started working um and uh then we weren't um and uh, my dad didn't want me to have anything to do with the business um unfortunately that was uh, just the way he was just like you know you don't need this headache it's the feast or famine it's all the things that make this industry difficult so he didn't want me to be a part of it and um i had other ideas <laughs> so okay so so you've got this this kind of it's almost like another body that is around this this presence of 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 the industry and you kind of wanted to pursue it and, and i'm sorry i saw that you the, the the first audition you had was from picking up a, a variety magazine yeah 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 um well, okay well that's what that that's how my other idea uh, presented itself in that uh, back in the day variety had a a magazine it wasn't just digital <laughs> um and they had themselves uh, uh in the back they had a, a casting um section that, that that told you you know what people were looking for and i submitted myself and got an audition and ended up going and getting it <laughs> and my dad was first alerted to the fact that i wanted to be an actor by a call from disney asking for my sizes <laughs> <laughs> so you know so i just had this thought and you know me at the same age you know i'm i'm picking up something i'm i'm, I'm picking up a, a a hulk comic book or <laughs> Or something to that nature, and I'm, you know, you know, just this this blur. <laughs> I'm waiting the, for variety. You know. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was a fantastic. Yeah. You, you put it yeah. down, pick up the cappuccino at, at eleven, and <laughs> <laughs> I'm like eleven years old, going, I don't know if I can do this without my agent. <laughs> it was a wonderful. It was a wonderful visual that was then immediately replaced by the the concept of the mouser size I know. being that thing it's like okay so it's this complete shift in paradigm <laughs> right <laughs> did you know what you were kind of getting into when when you had that opportunity it's it's, it's such a it's such just anything disney has its own you know kind of branding and uh, how it exists in the public eye what what did you think was going to happen and was that kind of what happened oh uh yes exactly it um i i can't well in 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 fairness to me um uh and to disney the the that the reputation that it that it has for all the young people that have become older and successful and those that have gone <laughs> um uh that wasn't really solidified back then uh quite yet so i just went in and just figured it was an exercise video and it was a series of exercise videos and and uh that's all it was I mean, yeah i mean i knew what it was when i got it i wasn't really excited about it 
And even at 11, I was still going, really? Exercise? Mousercise? <laughs> well, that's creative. <laughs> you know? But, but I'm sure the routines still stay with you to this day. <laughs> oh, no. Not at all. <laughs> I couldn't remember one if I tried. <laughs> no, it's, it's probably just as well. It might be traumatic. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and any any amount of uh, physical effort uh, in yes. that category is all, always traumatic for me. Always traumatic, yes, especially when it involves the mouse. So this started you kind of on on your journey, and eventually, I mean, you had uh, several things that you were involved with. Now, did you kind of split your time between trying to get television and and movie roles with theater, or did you just kind of focus on one? Um, I didn't. I didn't make that distinction. Uh, I just, I just wanted to work, and I didn't care really what 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 it was. It was just I, I knew I wanted to work, and my, I mean, my friends were all in the business. My, um, uh, I grew up with uh, my best friend was Keith Coogan, and um, we're still dear friends today. And he's awesome, and and he had been, he's been working since he was five, and so uh, to me, I was I was a latecomer at eleven. I was like, oh my God, I'm over the hill. Are you kidding? He's been doing this for this long. And, you know, and I just wanted to do what my friends were doing. And that's really how it started. Um, and then of course, you know, you can't last any time in the business until you realize whether or not it's, it's something you, you seriously do want <laughs> or if it's just something that everybody else was doing. So you just jumped in. So, um, and when it, after the first couple of uh, jobs came and I, I got the bug, so to speak, uh yeah i really enjoyed what i was doing and and um uh i, I fell in love with it after the fact um no yeah so that's 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 what happened so one of my favorite questions to ask um anybody that has had the the joy of of being an actor in both theater environments and on television movies i always like to ask what is your favorite part of the production process uh, or the creation of the 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 production between the two because uh, they're, they're they're very similar in many respects but they have some fairly significant differences but between which film and television or, or, or between uh between recorded media and theater stage oh yeah yeah wow um Okay, well, uh, he, he, the actor's answer is probably, I love the stage more than I love. No, I don't. Um, <laughs> I really I really enjoy the process of making film, and specifically movies over television, although I probably shouldn't say that now because the, the difference is really, really minute as far as anything goes. But um, classically, movies will afford you more time uh, than television will. Um, that, like I said, the, the media has been changing our, our entire business since, you know, streaming and, and what qualifies as a movie as opposed to television and what goes to what theater and what does, all of that is all in flux. So, so it really is kind of a mishmash now. But um, I always liked the fact that, that films seem to be more tolerant in that we could try something that the director knows is going to suck and he does not want to use it. <laughs> yeah. And every now and then, every now and then, some really amazing take, not even a, an idea, just a take comes up that's just like, you know, maybe it's something that I didn't expect or a plane landed and you just could not time it better, you know, and, you know, and, and so, you know, the, because those are the type of things, those accidents are the things that actors use to, to really, really kind of jump things up to the next level. And it all, it all focus, hyper focuses everybody. When somebody does something that you don't, that no one expected, you know, and everybody goes, <laughs> and they're all on. And that's when you can capture lightning in a bottle. And that's, um, that's what I really enjoy about it. I mean, so I, I would focus that way rather than look stage. I, I, I do enjoy stage because you got the live audience and the feedback. That's great. That's, right. that's wonderful. We all love instant gratification and, and instant feedback. Um, but, but stage has the, um, has a, uh, 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 a redundancy. I mean, it, it just, it, it gets, it, it's, it becomes a fight to not 
be stagnant and not be the same every night. That makes sense. So, so you're kind of fighting to be new and fresh. And whereas film, you know, you're lucky if you get rehearsal. And if you got a rehearsal, that's great, good on you. But you know, you're not gonna when you get to the set, it's gonna be completely different by the time you get there. And then people will start adding stuff and whatever. So it's never stale. It's never you might feel a little wonky on that stuff, but it's never <laughs> stale. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's it's always hard to get into that mindset when when you're on my side of the camera. I mean, I, I was lucky enough in college to be involved in theater productions, but even that isn't the same. I mean, you're going to do maybe 10, 12 shows as opposed to if you're on a run on Broadway. You're running and running and running and running. I mean, I did, I did two years on Fame the Musical. Two years on Fame the Musical. <laughs> every week yeah <laughs> three four times a week <laughs> two years <laughs> no we had a six month break but but that's a lot of productions that is a lot did, did they let you at least improvise some <laughs> <laughs> come out in a completely sorry. different sorry. outfit <laughs> he said he said improvise <laughs> when it comes to say there's nobody here by the way yeah. um but, <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, there's no improv on on uh, Broadway productions or theater productions for the most part, unless you're going specifically to an improv show. Um, yeah, you can forget about that. <laughs> um, I actually got yelled at. I almost fired. <laughs> uh, no, not fired, but but I certainly almost got sanctioned. I almost got fined for. Um, uh, I, I moved the word so, s o from the beginning of a paragraph to the end of the paragraph. Um, wow yeah that was it i i was just like I, i'm like <laughs> we're talking about two letters yeah so no uh, yeah yeah well sometimes it was so sometimes it was people but one word for sure right right <laughs> um i was i was varying it up i was i was changing it up and i wanted to see how it fit fit for that night at the end of the you no know, they got mad <laughs> yeah that's that's a drawback on stage i've i've heard there are some fairly control heavy individuals involved uh, in the in some of the directorial aspects oh, oh yeah especially uh, well i mean and not to say that there aren't those in film either i right. mean there's, there are people that want you word perfect and letter perfect you know and that exists some people that that we all know and love and love their work and it works out great for them oh yeah um a little harder on the actor, <laughs> um, <laughs> but if you have that respect for the for the creator, for the writer, that uh, um, that many of us do, um, when we end up working with them and seeing how they operate, um, you have no problem falling into whatever way they want to work, um, because it's obviously done them well. You know, so yeah. yeah. One of my favorite stories I think I heard at one point was uh, I believe it was the film pcu right it was uh <laughs> i had a friend on that uh, jeremy piven trying to get some of his improv in and had to go through a ridiculous workaround to be able to get his lines to be in the film uh-huh i yeah. know i well no i was on the set actually i my my buddy jake busey was in that oh i i definitely love jake busey's work uh yeah yeah, I'll have to get into that uh, on another podcast. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, oh no, so, he must have visited you at some point. <laughs> no, no, I just uh, I have I have a deep love for you know it's it's always great to to love the the marquee names that you see yeah, associated, yeah. Yeah. but as good as those names are, and that's sometimes what draws to the production, what really draws my eye is usually the, the supporting cast because that's where the flavor comes from that's where a lot of the the spark if that supporting cast isn't there it's not going to work right, right. and it, it's just so nice and you know just Busey specifically uh, has had some really fantastic roles over yeah. the years yeah and uh yeah it, he has hasn't he i know yeah. i know I, I you know i got jealous from afar from like <laughs> It's like, hey, buddy, I'm really glad. I'm glad I'm really rocking it. Yeah, that was great. And a great book. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of great roles, I mean, yeah. you got one real early. And, and yeah. that's that that is the the impetus, the 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 source of my 
uh, fandom <laughs> here being with uh, the, the film Real Genius uh, yeah. is is one of my perennial favorites. I watch it at least once a year. It, ah. it is a film <laughs> that makes me feel better after I had a really awful time. Oh, so that's I, that's great. I, I when I was when I was watching it as a kid, it's like, oh, this uh, this this young man. This is this is me. I'm smarter than everybody <laughs> around me. And you know, it took me a little while. It's like, no, you're not. But <laughs> but you thought you were. But I thought it was. Uh, but it was right. it was such a fantastic, such a fantastic film. And it just had had a a really a warmth to it and just kind of um an inviting aspect to it that that really um really um drew me in and it the add on some science to that and just okay i'm done yeah so tell me uh there was a i'm, I'm sure there was a, a casting call or or something for for the part that you got i know i i talked to i think uh i think i talked to dean devlin and mm. he was uh, uh involved in that project as well yeah, and, he was and uh and everything he said about it it seems like man it was I get I get different kind of perspectives from from how things went. How did getting into this work for you? Uh, to, to real genius specifically? Absolutely. It was about as boilerplate and standard as you could possibly imagine for me. It <laughs> went from audition to callback to callback to um uh what is it um, a, a test shoot. A, 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 wow, I blanked on the term. Screen test. Thank you. <laughs> wow, what the heck is wrong with me? Anyway, so yeah, so just to to um, uh, to a screen test that uh, they had. It wasn't just me. There was um, it was about seven or eight people that they that they uh, that they screen tested, and I was one. I ended up getting it. I mean. Um, it was about as standard as the, the only thing that wasn't standard is, is the reason I got the part. The reason I got the part is because, and I, 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 I have this strange feeling that they all planned it. It wasn't just Val, but it was because Val Kilmer um, specifically threw curveballs at everybody. Uh. He started making stuff up. Now you, you and I just talked about what, yeah, <laughs> about about stuff that's in rehearsal and stuff that you're prepared for and then all of a sudden then something comes in and actors are you know th that's gold for an actor well that's the approach that i take um with how i work that's not how everybody looks at it a lot of people want to rehearse it <laughs> so it's rote and into the ground and they know exactly what's coming them. and they can execute their choices and they're in and there's some really good at it i'm did you know on you forever whatever works for you fantastic but <laughs> for <laughs> me for me i'm i'm a little I'm, i mean i really kind of enjoy what comes out um unexpectedly and naturally um I, I i look at my work and i and i find that the the moments that i tend to really really do well where i'm just like damn i can do this almost always come out of a moment that I'm not expecting. Which says a lot about my process and how I plan to see things and how they come out. You know, it's like, maybe sounds like not, to me. Yeah, they're not really as great as the moments that I just am reacting. So um, that being said, I think I think that's how I got the part. Because uh, Val came up with that, that whole, uh, the, you remember the scene where he's like, uh, take a step forward, take a step back? Absolutely. It wasn't in the script. I, I kind of wanted I mean, it about made that. it there, but <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's, you know, some things, you know, uh, the, the, the speech about the pickles, you know, I, I assume that yeah. was probably pretty well written that that's yeah. a little harder to, to improvise, but there, there are several little fun bits and pieces that, uh, that you, sometimes you can feel it, or at least in, uh, you, I imagine in my yeah. third person omniscient, I can feel it. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. And that was, that was one of them. What uh? What about that? Um, what about that film? Do you most fondly remember about making it? Most fondly remember. Or is uh, is there anything that you fondly remember? Um, there was so much that was cool about it. Um, 
I talk about sense of memory. I don't even know why it's good, but I remember the smell of the set coming on there, and and especially when they had the popcorn. <laughs> When they had the popcorn in there, it was like the 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 smell of a soundstage of a of a soundstage that was full of dust and aged use of many years and paint and primer and all of this I'm sure toxic stuff that was all over the place. You know the smell of that mixed with yummy popcorn. <laughs> That's a little weird. Uh, a little strange, a little strange, um, but uh, there's there's that. Um, I think the the one that I enjoyed the most probably was the um, uh, was the party scene, uh, you know, playing in the pool and right uh, with all that stuff because you know it's like everybody's you know all serious and stuff, and I'm diving in the pool, which by the way, they made so warm for me specifically because it was shot at night. I was the lead, and they they weren't gonna let you know some 14 year old snot nose you know kid get like pneumonia the next day because they filled the thing with cold water so so they actually made it really warm for me um so i spent most of the time in there <laughs> I was really enjoying it <laughs> yeah a lot of that a lot of the i mean it's a lot of kind of more normal set pieces but but yeah. one i was kind of curious about yeah. um that that was just different from the rest of the steam tunnels yeah the, the 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 how did they put that one together did you just kind of show up and it was done or did you get to done. see the construction process at all no? no it was it was all done those those sets were um were um copied from the steam tunnels at caltech they actually went down to caltech and they have steam tunnels throughout the entire place and um, all of the stuff that was on the dorms, it's in the dorms too at Caltech, but, but the, the walls where everybody's writing on the walls and everybody's, you know, um, all of that stuff, that's all there. That's that they were taking pictures and they copied stuff directly from, you know, the, the, yeah, they, they really, really went into severe detail with, with a lot of this stuff, which is why I think so many people that, um, our eggheads, no offense. <laughs> I'm one too, so it's okay. Um, that they connect with it because so much is recognizable to them. They go, that happened. The, the, all the tricks and the, the the funny things that you see happening in the in in the movie were based on real pranks. Those were the the car being built in someone's apartment. That happened. Really? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, that that happened. They walked, and now one that didn't make it into the movie, they walked a cow up onto the top of the library building at, at uh, I think it was Caltech doing it to MIT or MIT doing it to Caltech. Well, they were always one or the other. Um, I think Caltech did it to MIT. They walked a cow onto the library building on the roof, knowing full well that cows cannot walk downstairs. They cannot walk downstairs. That means they had to hire a crane oh, to pull the cow off the roof. <laughs> That's fantastic. Oh, it feels it feels like it's a uh, something that may not be gotten away with nowadays. No, I'm never know. Talk. You couldn't get away with any of this. No, <laughs> there might be some some people oh. that would be a little upset. A little, yeah. Peter would just jump all over you like you're. I think it's hysterical. <laughs> As long as, long as the it sound okay. Out, okay, right? He yeah. made it down safe and sound. I don't see why anybody's upset about this. Oh man. Oh yeah, yeah. So, so okay. So you're you're in the process of making this. Did you? Okay, I, I guess I guess this is the question. You're, you're, this is one of those instances where you say kind of Val, Val Kilmer was kind of doing his own thing and trying to, uh, you know, in in the in the birth of his ascension. Uh, yeah as it were yeah but did you in because you had a lot of really really fun back and forth between a lot of the other actors that it it just feels like you would have had to have um a bit of of time to just kind of bond uh with Val yeah with with him and with uh with several of the other actors I mean uh specifically just some of the dialogue is so is so specific it's it's really kind of one of those things that if you don't have the right chemistry it it doesn't kind of work so like uh with uh 
um, the Laszlo character, Laszlo. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I was gonna, say, I was gonna say John Grice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just it's it's one. Of the, did you get a chance to really kind of here's here's some time with the script, yeah. or was it just, just kind of straight into it? Well, we got it was it was straight into it. A lot of it was straight into it because. I was 14. I was a child actor and I didn't have the um, the social equivalency to go out and have a drink after the show or after the shoot with with John with you know I didn't have that um, just by virtue of being 14. So that being said, um, uh, we we developed enough of that on the set and and John specifically, was really really good to me and, and he was really good about um including me in the stuff that i could be included in um you know at lunch or whatever so i would have lunch with john i'd have lunch with um uh, uh mark kamiyama I, I would i would have lunch with everybody except val <laughs> um val was doing his own thing like you said um he was coming up and and um he and i got along uh really well um, he specifically, I, I got the feeling that he specifically made sure of it. Um, but that, that ended pretty quickly after the tape. Uh, he, he and I didn't do a whole lot of hanging out afterwards, but everything that you saw on sc or screen is pretty much how we were. Yeah. Um, yeah, we got along fine. We got along, no problem. Um, it, but, the, but there wasn't quite the camaraderie that happened afterwards that, that, that happened with the other cast. Um, and so, yeah, if, if, if there was interactions that seemed really natural between me and John, that's because we did. We, 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 we all hit it off, you know? It was a really fun shoot to work. Yeah, everything I always hear about him, he seems like a, a, a real nice gentleman. Yeah, yeah. Well, from a more professional standpoint, since this is still early on in, in mm -hmm. your yeah. Uh, career, yeah. what, were you able to pick up any nuggets of, uh, you know, either wisdom or uh, just certain uh, certain skill sets while you were on set by watching some of the other actors. I mean, like William Atherton is just kind of a legend when it comes yeah. to, to how he engages in any specific role. Yeah. Were you able to see, see how he works. does anything stick with you from any of that? Um, yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. The moment before I think was something that I knew about it, but, but it was uh, to see it to see it happen in in action um i remember there was one there was one t uh there was one take that we had wow what? this just popped in my head and i don't even know why i remember it, it was haven't thought of it in just as long but but i remember that remember there was a scene in there where we come running in uh, after we realized after Barney's Beaneries, which is where we shot the, the, the food and us all having a good old time. And right. we come back to the lab. We run back to the lab after Laszlo goes, whoa, what'd you do? You just created something that's going to kill people. Right. And we're like, well, let the designers come up with it. No, it's going to kill people. And we go running back to the lab only to find out it's been taken. Yes. You remember that? I do indeed. Val was doing laps really yeah he was doing laps around um around the uh the the sound stage so that he'd be suitably out of breath yeah no he would time it out so that like right before they started rolling he would run out and head out on a little lap around the sound stage um uh now how far out he got i have no idea sorry about that um but uh uh yeah he and so he would come in after the they had already done the the sticks and they had already said the action had already been called I'm like jesus are you gonna run in with me i don't know because i'm starting you know behind the thing and whatever and then all of a sudden you know i go to open the door to start running in and he comes running up behind me and i feel him feel him come past my shoulder and then he comes running right past me and and in on time <laughs> like like he's got it timed out perfectly so that like when i'm going he sees me he's gonna corner in and that um, that I thought was really really interesting, um, uh, and that that definitely stayed with me. So that's that's what I mean by moment before. He was not right. going to come in like, oh, 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 oh. no, he was actually running. <laughs> that's kind of awesome. Yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, now I know you still get uh, recognized for this film. 
uh i mean i mean i expect that you do because uh it's i know a lot of people that this still just kind of resonates with yeah is it what about the film kind of my last question about it what about it do you think it is that gives it the staying power with some people um with this one i can say the the uh commitment to truth that i was talking about and the um uh the the detail that they went into to follow um the reality of what the world they were trying to create was so much um more it was so much more detailed than i think i've ever seen anybody do on on a, especially a collegiate comedy like this i mean we're talking about the you know the era of revenge of the nerds you know i mean right <laughs> you know they weren't exactly going into detail with that you know like it's great for fart jokes uh, but it, <laughs> you know nobody really cares about the chemical makeup and whether it works or not right. and, and to see if uh, you know it matches the science and see if the and um that's what they really did that they 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 went and i don't know if that was brian grazer i don't know if it was martha coolidge and the, and the combination of the two or i don't know how it got to be so detailed but it really was very detailed um and um and it ended up ringing true to i think a much bigger a much bigger demographic than than i think that the, they even expected them to um because there's so many people that are either eggheads or they're trekkies or they're they're star wars for you know it's like they uh, they grew up with this stuff so everybody connected in some way to the in, intelligent part of of this comedy that was just a, a college comedy you know it's not supposed to be you know anything this quite this specific but they went at it almost like they were um like researching uh you know for uh uh, uh jfk or so you know some some historical drama that had to be true you know um no the the every if you look at real genius everything that that was in the movie that wasn't already in existence then is in existence now yeah it wasn't then the drone that was in the hell that was in my room i remember i mean that that's a that's a drone we we came up with the drone before the drone <laughs> you know we, they didn't have those toys around you know and we had it was a what we did was a fan on a string you know right. um and then uh then they made this drone that uh, ended up uh, looking a lot like what we have today and and uh the laser that we created the big one maybe has it on their ships right now and they can knock planes out of the sky they can knock uh, uh specifically i think it's made for um pirates it uh but yeah, it blows stuff up and everything. <laughs> and, it's, mm. and it's not one that you can see in the spectrum of light. It's just like they point it and they go, oh, okay, turn it on. But that's it. So the military still got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, they've got it. They still have it after all of that. Oh, yeah, in the movie, we took it back. Yeah, that didn't happen. <laughs> well, that dedication to truth is, yeah. is very admirable. Now, my yeah. dedication at the moment is more to talking about social media ah. <laughs> don't forget putting people to catch us on all of our social media to keep up to date with what's going on in the world of pudding where are you most active richard well you could see some of my activity on our instagram oh. account it, would that happen to be at pudding guys that one would yes amazing you know what that is also our facebook so you can about once a month <laughs> see, if, see you're lucky. Something. if you're lucky we'll post something on facebook we're probably most most on twitter at real pudding guys but of course you can catch us on patreon as pudding guys that's right where for just one dollar a day you can support us as we bring you new interviews new material new stuff to make our interviews and material look better it's just fantastic for only a dollar a month hey paul a, not a lot no it's, not really it really isn't that's actually twelve dollars over the course of a year right small change to help the pudding guys keep going and we love our supporters 
we look forward to seeing you on social media. And we're back. And- <laughs> Hello. <laughs> we're back. Right. <laughs> drooling, but we're back. Hey, uh, 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 drooling counts uh, in, in most, uh, most of the important sports style. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So you've got this massive success under your belt. And you're getting to the point where you're finishing school and you have a choice to make yeah. between going to college and continuing to pursue acting. Yeah. I can't imagine that kind of a choice. Yeah. And how did you, well, how did you approach I, it? How did I approach it? What, what choice did I make? <laughs> I went to the dark side. I think we know that. Um <laughs> Well, uh, you know what? I wasn't, I don't think I was destined to go to college right after high school. I, I, I don't think it was ever going to be something that I wanted to do. I needed a break. Um, and it, it, I mean, it had partly to do with the, the business and wanting to pursue um, my career, but I think it, that, that it had more to do. Wow. I'm just like all sorts of you're popular. popular today um so uh it had more to do with uh the fact that i got i got really disillusioned by high school um and and i have i was an a student for the longest time and then hit uh, ninth grade ironically the same movie of the year uh, i shot the movie uh, yeah, same year i shot the movie um but i don't think i really don't think it was related to the movie per se but the time that i didn't spend in school in actual classroom school um i hit some really really weird pockets of jealousy amongst my teachers and and I, I had done really really well all throughout the shoot. We were banking hours. I got along with my teacher. We were to them. We got caught way up, like way up. <laughs> um, uh, only for that uh, to be um, challenged by my teachers later on. And when I got back, like, oh, you think you're going to be out here half a year and you're not going to come back and and work for my class for my A? I think you're gonna. And then they turned around and acted like I didn't do anything for that amount of time. Uh, and I was like, wait, I did, I did everything they did. I did more, <laughs> you know? Um, and, uh, and because that was, it was, uh, that, that was kind of a struggle. And, uh, you know, I had one specific incident that knocked me out. Like I just, I just went, forget it, forget it. So there were a couple of years there right, right before the last year. And then I realized, Oh, I should have been working this whole time. Um, that I was just my attitude sucked. That I just was not, you know, I I had I, I was not having it. And then um, then I, I graduated both uh, two times. I graduated. I took a California high school proficiency exam. So I actually was able to work. I could have walked away from high school and still had a diploma. Um, my parents didn't want me to do that, and I wanted to listen to my parents and be a good boy. So um, um, so I went ahead and finished high school uh regular uh barely but uh yeah the, i mean after that whole situation and i actually made it through i needed some processing time i needed some time and especially with uh because i had I, I like uh like you said I, I had gotten into ucla i actually got accepted and i went no i i got closer and closer to the day and i went I don't even know why I'm going there. I, you know, they, they, they wouldn't let me sign up for the, for the major that I wanted because they wanted all these prerequisites done. And they, because of the classes that I finished by the skin of my teeth in high school, things like Calc B, I didn't belong in algebra. I didn't know, no, this is not, <laughs> you know? And so I was going to have to go and do all these insane things that like I was, it would have been it would have been fine if it was only daunting if it was like i wanted i wanted the goal and i had to get through these classes to do it that wouldn't have shaken me out because i would have been like okay i have to go from a to b to get to c and um that that would have been fine but the problem is is i didn't have the goal on the other side i didn't have like what i wanted to do i was already doing what i wanted to do so um, and then I, I went back later, of course, uh, much later, um, and uh, went back with a purpose, and that was for sign language. 
And that, that was easy to apply myself. It was easy for me to go and, okay, I got to do this requirement, this requirement, then I'm going to certify that, all that stuff. And I got through it because I had that in mind, um, but that didn't come to me until later. You know? Well, and, and that seems to be something that's happening for other reasons to a lot of people, even right now. Yeah. yeah. Well, the times have changed too. I mean, my, my parents' generation, a BA meant, you know, a salary bump to the, to, you know, a certain class. And now it's, it, people just want them to know you to know your job. So people from trade schools are actually going to do far better. Right. Than than most people that have just a general BA and that are just, you know, um, and, uh, and, and I mean, I understand the mindset. I really do. Um, not to say that there's anything wrong with general education. However, it's not for all people. And when it comes down to it, you know, a, a welding company or a place that is hiring a welder is going to want that welder to know what they're doing <laughs> when yeah. they get in front of a welding thing, not some guy that just is really good at everything that can kind of figure stuff out and go, I got to do that, you know? Yeah. No, <laughs> they want them to know how to do this stuff. They don't want to sit there and teach you. No. And yeah. anybody that has to use that thing later will be very thankful that uh, the right <laughs> yeah. person got the job. That the weld doesn't come apart. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> now, I'm sure you may, you may, be able to predict my next question about at least the production that it's associated with it's just because of the t-shirt that I currently have on. Uh, I did notice that. Yes. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I'm particularly excited at the time of this recording, the the next season of Cobra Kai will be coming out uh, in about a week. Yeah. And, and uh, you were involved in a film that will play directly into the plot of this particular season. Yes. Uh, so you were in the third karate kid not not it, it was a it was a, it was a small part and so yeah. just yeah. seeing you pop up on the screen it's like oh i know that guy yeah yeah oh well he got hit again yeah yeah <laughs> and he got punched in the face oh <laughs> oh he's sliding across the floor oh oh that was his whole part oh oh that made me a little sad but <laughs> <laughs> but uh were you kind of a, a are you a fan of uh the any sort of uh the karate kids specifically oh, any bet. martial arts films yeah you bet you bet i mean i am i am a martial artist i i um uh i was was i a black belt at that time yeah i was i was i was i was a black uh, uh black belt in in uh Tung Sudo, oh. uh which is a korean style that is a, a sister style to taekwondo um and uh, I had already uh, been down that road a, a bit, which is partly why I got called to, to this role, um, to do this role. And, and uh, uh, I went, that one came through Marty Cove, actually, through, through Cobra, <laughs> the Cobra Kai master himself mm -hmm. um, brought me in and uh, met with Appleson. And, and we did like, the audition was more like a stunt audition than anything else. They wanted to know that I was going to get hit and fly off, you know. So uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's what I did for that, um, and uh, so yeah, I'm a total fan. I love it. Are you kidding? So uh, so so at that point, uh, I I would I would suspect what is it like to okay? So you you trained in in the martial arts, and you're in this the scene, and you know Machio had some training, oh, but yeah. was not a martial artist, right? what is it like trying to choreograph something like that so it'll look good and come across the way that it needs to look so that everybody it, it appears the way that it needs to how do you how do you get that across between the two of you? it was one of the most difficult shooting days i think i've ever done in my entire life to this day um the, one of the most single like shooting days first of all it was 18 hours that's an 18 hour day work day oh. yeah and yeah. <laughs> and it um it, it it uh was um exacerbated by the fact that uh, i had a 104 degree fever mm. when i showed up for work now here we are in covid times what would happen <laughs> Well, they just they'd stick a mask on you, you They'd know, and Robin Lively, God bless her. She was so nice, uh, as nice as she could be <laughs> to somebody who's got a 104 degree fever and grabbing her by the shoulder and going, hey, baby, how you doing? Hi, 
<laughs> the look of panic was real is what you, you said. No, uh, no, she took it actually well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she took it really well, uh, I thought. Um, uh, but she, yeah, she was, I mean, we were all kind of like already on edge for that one. Um, and then on top of it, they had me, the way Abelson, uh, John Abelson had, had designed the shot, um, the camera was in front of me and you see the dance floor behind me. And in his mind, he wanted to see me get elbowed in the stomach, punched in the face. And then I fly back and slide across the floor in that same shot. Yeah, I don't know how that would work. Mm, it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't really work out because there was there was a, a space problem, like like with the the le like the lens of the camera would have had to be so wide to have caught, caught me hitting the floor and sliding. Right. Uh, they didn't want all of that, you know, in that shot. They wanted a, a more specific shot where he saw blood. You know, now I understand what he saw in his head probably had more to do with something like CGI blood coming, you know, maybe, you know. um, yeah, uh, um, what did he call it? Sam, um, the director, hello. Anyway, uh, yeah, they had, uh, you know, I'm, I'm imagining that he, that's what he had in his head uh, for that particular shot. It, it, it ended up being kind of half and half, so neither a chicken nor a turkey. Um, but uh, he couldn't see the blood and he kept saying, I can't see the blood. So we kept doing it again and again. And again. I must have hit that dance floor about 50 times. Mm -hmm. By the end of the day, my, I mean, there was no pad because he wanted to see me slide. So by the end of the day, my entire left side of my body was black, not black and blue, black. I mean, I, it was, that was uh, an interesting day. Cause I, I mean, I kept having to do it the same way, of course. Right. You know? So it's like having somebody punch you in the arm and they punch you again, and they punch you again. <laughs> like relative. Um, it was a tough day. It was a very tough day. And it, it ended up looking all right. I was less than satisfied with it um, because I thought it could have been better. Machio, God bless him, uh, you know, he, you know, he was trying to explain to, to John as much as possible, you know, that my hand, because my hand had a blood pack in it. And I was supposed to go like that after I spit the blood. So it was supposed to look like that's where the blood source came from. And John kept saying, I kept putting my hand in front of my face and that he can't see the blood. Well, he couldn't see the blood because it was coming out in sprays. Not, not one. Right. Um, and Machio jumped in and was like, John, um, you gotta look at my shirts because he had to change shirts every time. And he goes, he goes, John, there's no handprint in the, there's, n there's blood everywhere. <laughs> He's not blocking his face. I'm telling you, I'm getting spit on every time. <laughs> you know, and I'm thinking back going, if he only knew I had the original COVID. <laughs> uh, <right>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man. So that that's that's okay so i've got to ask on yeah. on the last kind of uh associated uh with that with that question yeah were you able to convince the current producers of cobra kai to have you be the mastermind behind everything so that we can see <laughs> you pop up somewhere in like season five they have yet to call me uh, i don't know the answer to that um i think that's a great idea by the I, way i like it i, I think that's a brilliant idea we already know that I work well with the actors. Right. Yes, that, that we know. And you cl um, clearly have a grudge. Uh, I clearly, clearly am not able to put this down. I am, I'm serious about this. This is, this is, you know, because you know, everybody goes, ah, you know, the kind of kid, you know, he won. The, 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 the. But nobody thinks that that guy that got humiliated that went sliding across the floor, that was pretty much the last time a pretty girl talked to him. <laughs> yeah yeah you want to know a grudge i got a grudge that's right he's got motivation that's all it takes motivation and time I'm just saying <laughs> all right so <laughs> all right so a, a couple of other things that i i have to ask about and you, you've had so many so many great movies you've been involved with over the years that just <laughs> It's, well, I mean, really, uh, Apollo 13 is, yeah. is fantastic. I yeah. can't imagine being on set with just the sheer 
magnitude of talent that was uh, there at the time. I would just be just like, yeah, I'm just going to sit here. I'll, I'm good. Yeah, that's that think? really was what it was for me. It was, for, it was for, not just for me, for a lot of people. I mean, all, all of us that were there were just kind of looking around going, wow. You know, I mean, I looked behind me at the time. I'm, I'm like, just, I'm doing my station. We're focused in and whatever. And I looked behind me at the time to go deliver my line to something. I looked behind Ed Harris. The guy behind Ed Harris was Joe Spano. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, not like not one row, two rows of guys that I like, I think are fantastic, phenomenal <laughs> actors. And they're just like lined up. But, and, and I'm like, oh, wow. Well, well. <laughs> you know? Well, and because of this, I think you're in a a prime position to to answer a question. You're probably not going to know the answer to this because I've asked the other two individuals that were also on Real Genius about this, and okay. they were unaware. But since you've been involved in a production directly with Tom yes. Hanks, yes, there is a single scene in when you're being introduced at the freshman mixer right before they pan to you. Yes, it looks very much like Tom Hanks at the top of the stairs. I still have not been able to confirm or deny that it was him because I'm, I'm not to the level where that I'm, I'm probably going to get a chance to talk to him at any, any point, but. And my answer is I have no clue. <laughs> now, if I was smart, I would have parlayed that into you're onto something there. And I think <laughs> all of this. Um, my guess would be probably not. I think no. Bosom Buddies was probably well underway in that at that point. Right, right. Um, Same hairstyle, what, what, everything. What, what year? What year was that? See, uh, uh, Bosom Buddies was uh, was that eighty six? No. So 86. right around the exact same time. No, he was no, he was he was not working background at that point. <laughs> <laughs> but every time I see that, it's like, how is that not him? Uh, you know, magic movies. I don't know. Right. <laughs> and so on, another favorite that I have that you were involved with, uh, again, just kind of the staggering talent that I, I just blew my mind to see you pop up in was one of my favorites, American President. Yeah. So yeah. I have a strange, well, not a strange question, but maybe an atypical question about that particular film. Uh, it's a politically based mm. film that's mm -hmm. char character driven and has a positive end outlook yes do you think we're ever going to get to a point where we can have another film <laughs> that can be like that <laughs> politically based <laughs> that's uh, that doesn't end with a bunch of explosions right <laughs> a lot of cold stares across the yeah. table that would be uh no <laughs> no i i and i don't want to i mean i don't want to god i'm gonna sound like such a pessimist but i am a little bit uh, of a pessimist because i you know i think um i i think we really really lost something very special about about this country i think we lost it, it, it when we when we elected trump president i really do and i, I understand that People are going to go, oh, my God, he mentioned the word that was going to, you know, it's like, no, we have to call it out. And I think we have to shame those who are idiots uh, in our society. And if we don't, we end up with more Trumps. And that's the and that's just the the the, the long and short of it. And if um, you know, if you because I have dear friends of mine, smart people, a lot of smart people backed him, a lot of smart people backed him. And, and I, I, you know, I wanted to shake them and go, really? Because now we're a joke. Before we were just borderline nuts and they didn't know what to do with us with the rest of the world. Now we're a punchline. Congratulations. We'll never get that back. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and, but I mean, time will tell, history will tell, you know, and, and, and but I, I think we've already seen enough of uh, the post Trump era uh, history to know that you know the the joke continues um as long as we're gonna let it and um that's that's what i feel about it and i don't think we're gonna see a movie like american president and and by, by the way american president was a political movie like you said it, it definitely had uh, uh, a perspective and much more of a liberal perspective than i even find myself politically um but i love the movie of course not just that i'm in it i love you know i thought it was uh, so well written 
Uh, Aaron Sorkin was just uh, on his game. That was genius. Just beautiful. Um, And uh, and that being said, uh, yeah, I think we've I think we've kind of hit a real um, a real dark time in our political history. Um, And hopefully, I'm you know I'm hoping that like the optimist side of me (laughs) that's getting fainter and fainter as a voice in my head is going. Don't worry, we'll make it back. (laughs) <laughs> everything will be fine everything will be fine I hope, um, so. I hope so i hope so but but i don't know i'm i'm i think i think we're gonna have to have a real talented generation of people come up uh and take over for the massive failures that we we hand them yeah you know and we, and we did we handed them a failure there's there there are a lot of challenges ahead <clears throat> yeah for sure no kidding, no kidding. That's, that's awful dark. Oh, we're going to go back. Yeah, to I know, I know. How did we get this dark? Oh, that's right. I mentioned the T word. Ay, ay, ay. Anyway, it's my fault. I, 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 I served you the pitch just right up the middle. Of that. That, that's all on me. And then I went. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> so, yeah. OK, so let's let's think modern uh, modern day in terms of the, the work uh, that you're currently involved. With. You've got several different projects that sound particularly interesting you you were in something recently called uh, uh 13 minutes yes and i've always oh, yeah. i've always liked amy smart and yeah. is what what is that what is that about and what what do you what do you do what's your role in that? <laughs> well i play uh, uh the shop mechanic um or the head of the shop it's my shop um that uh, works on the ambulances in the town and and gets everything up and running and and um, you know that's 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 my character. It's, uh, but the whole the whole movie is is not about individual characters. It's actually an ensemble that that uh, is about groups, of, specifically like four different groups of people. Um, this family and uh, you know the, the the garage folks and the folks that are over in, in my shop, uh, and the you know the the folks over here that are raising crops and you know how they're going to deal deal with it and. And it's just about those kind of different uh, groups of folks that are just trying to survive this tornado that, that comes and, you know, big wind hits small town, knock it over. Um, that's the, and it's, we've seen that before in other movies. This is the ensemble part of it where it just shows people kind of working again. See, that's, that's, that's where we come back to the positivity right yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> so so you're saying this will be a good if you're in a position to want to see something that's going to renew your uh faith and people in general you should yeah. watch 13 minutes yeah absolutely absolutely because you see i mean you know one of the heroines mm-hmm. and it is paz vega and i i i mean i love her She's i didn't awesome. i didn't know her name before i worked with her and and i i loved her work already and then I got to work with her. And I was like, "Oh my God, she's just brilliant." Um, but yeah, her character is uh, definitely one of those. It's just like this migrant worker that that comes in and just like leads folks to what ended up being salvation for them, um, a shelter that was not available um, uh, at the uh, at you know for at first glance because there's 13 minutes from when you hear that siren to when you better be in something that's going to hold up because you're going to die. Otherwise. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that sounds like a lot of fun. I'm definitely yeah. going to check that one out. Yeah, I know, right? Um, I've got such this, I've got this cue that just keeps growing and growing. And <laughs> like, I, I, I just, uh, th- that's the nature of being a, a pop culture nerd is, is <laughs> you're never going to catch up. You just, hey don't. man, uh, you know what? I want to throw as many things up in front of you as I can. <laughs> I like it. I like All right. it. All right. Um, so, okay. The, now this is, I'm usually not a, a, a rom-com or kind of a, 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 a that kind of a, a comedy kind of person, but I, is that the is that going to be your role? You're going to be in a film with Joyce Dewitt. So as soon as yeah. I I see Joyce Dewitt, it's like that's Bree's company. Like, yeah, I know, right? That's really cool. That, that's really cool. Yeah, I know. And you get to be and you get to play the part of if you're going to be in a, a, a comedy like that, you get, if you get to play the part of the priest, you're generally going to get some juicy bits here. I the, got I got a lot of juicy bits. <sighs> I got a lot of, a lot of juicy bits, uh, you know, with that one. And, um, 
good on Tom for for hiring me to do it. I I got to you know work out all of my uh, inner rage at the Catholic Church. <laughs> I got to yeah be that priest that was just like huh. Um, mm. Does, but, does uh, that no, mean no, no, you get? Does that mean you get in a fight with Kurt Angle? No, 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 no. An ankle lock? no, 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 no. I think it's just my my take on the priest. I mean, is that that's that's what my revenge was. <laughs> um, no, no, it's it's uh, it, it's a really fun role, and like you said, that you know, it's you you come across those roles so rarely where you've got those little nuggets where it's just that's yours. Usually, you know, I'm the one serving the ball to somebody that gets right. to. Um, and no, this one was mine. I, I, I was able to, to do that because it is one of those things, you know, we all remember and want to, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm not going to copy someone else's work, but if you want to talk about priests that made it into the, to the folklore of your mind, um, from, uh, um, oh my God, <laughs> oh, Princess day. Ride, thank you very much. <laughs> Knowledge. All marriage. Um, what brings us together? What brings today? us together today? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah. So the the name of that is uh, is called Ask, Ask Me to Dance, to Dance right? Yeah. So yeah. when is that coming out? Uh, that's coming out. Oh boy, Tom, forgive me if I get this wrong. January or February of next year. This uh, upcoming year. Right around um, the corner. Around the corner. So yeah, so, uh, I think. Wow, I gotta call and ask him. Um, I'll have it by the end of the podcast. Um, <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, no, it should be out in the beginning of next year, and it's um, it's awesome. Tom Malloy, uh, it's his uh, it's his uh, first time directing himself. Oh, uh, yeah, in this thing, which is daunting for any actor, um, and he does a great job in it. It was I like, I mean, you always want your buddy to to do well, but you know he, when they do this well you just, when you know you, you're feeling like geez man he's really outshined himself <laughs> you know, that's when you can really be happy for your friend and and know that uh, they did a good thing you know and he did a good thing here this is a really good thing oh that, that sounds like it'll be a lot of fun yeah uh, and of course the other one that uh, is coming up to uh bring on the horses bring on the dancing horses or bring on the dancing horses sorry about that yes that's all right but is that your entire role is is done in sign. Your all of your dialogue in sign language. That's yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's that and and um, that came as a blend of the my two careers and my career as an actor and my career as, uh, career as a sign language interpreter. And it was one of those things where where this production had these characters and I, I asked Michael Polish why he wrote it that way. Why, why did you put these two characters? And he didn't really have a coherent answer. <laughs> he, it was for him, it was just like he had, he wanted a team that was really insular and, and connected to each other. And he originally wrote it as a husband and wife. Makes it sense. ended up obviously not being that, <laughs> um, but he wanted that type of deep connection with the characters as because we're, we're kind of the um greek chorus you know we come in and we discuss the 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 episode that you saw before okay uh and pieces of that and what's coming up we foreshadow that so we're a little bit that's the, like our function um so he wanted that to be more insular but less um uh affected by the other characters in the in the show um, which I think he got with that. I think that that, that was his solution. The solution is that, but it's also very visually um, interesting. <laughs> um, yeah. But it also presented me and John Marcer is my partner. He's, a, he's actually deaf. Um, he's a deaf actor. And um, uh, he and I, uh, uh, you know, spent a lot of time like trying to get the ASL right through these really heavy costumes that that you know you would you would typically not have such a difficult time translating from asl to english but now we have a limited asl that we can use because it's it's got gloves and it's got all sorts of things going on that you just you know you really need to focus to make it clear for the deaf audience because the deaf audience there's there is one 
Um, and we have it subtitled in English. So people do understand what we're saying, but there's no voiceover. There's no voiceover. So you see the subtitles, you're reading the English, but you're getting all the emotion and stuff like the, off of our physicality. So it was challenging and a lot of fun. That's got to really lend a, a unique ambiance to, to the scenes that you do that way. You have no idea. <laughs> like there were times that, yeah, there were, it led to some really interesting things. And afterwards we sat down with the before and after with the script supervisor, um, John and I, and we would go take by take and go, okay, uh, okay, here we, we improv this a little bit. We, we uh, kind of rolled with this idea because that changed. So here's what I'm saying. And here's the English translation is something along the lines of blank, blank, blank. So he and I would discuss it and come up with it together to present to the script supervisor who would go ahead and put that version in that take on that script. And we did it for every single wow. take. We had to because otherwise... It was going to be wrong. It wouldn't sync up, you know, and who's, and you're the editor and you don't speak sign language. Who's going to sync it up for the deaf audience, you know, and the deaf audience is going to, they're going to laugh at you if, if you get it wrong. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and rightfully so. I yeah. mean, it's, <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't imagine the, the confusion that the, the immediacy of the two things not being on the same page. Yeah, well, and you're talking about two languages that are grammatically different. So, so you might have something that comes out in sign that hasn't been spoken yet, that hasn't, that hasn't you know, come up on the, on the subtitles yet. Um, but it has to be close enough in timing so that it comes up on the screen and that the jokes are kind of, if there is a joke, you know, that the laughs are semi, it's not easy. It's, it's not easy. Well, there's nothing um, funnier than plague. Uh, there's the, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That being said, um, so you know what the costumes look like. All right. Yeah. Great. Um, yes. We're, we're dressed as plague doctors. Uh, um, uh yeah but uh but it's um it definitely presented challenges for those reasons oh, that yeah. sounds, and that one's uh that one i'm very very much interested in. yeah me yeah. too me too and we're, we're gonna be in sundance this year uh hopefully yeah. there is one yeah uh you know so that's when we'll start seeing things ramp up and we'll have some information as to what platform will be on and all that's awesome. All right. So we always have three final questions that have nothing to do with anything. I love it. That we, that we fire ask away. Are they, random or are they the same for everybody? They're the same for everybody because okay. it's, it's kind of a, it's, it's, it's random, but it's, it's where we all connect as people. Okay. So, <laughs> okay. Sort of. So like food, <laughs> our, our show, everybody loves pudding. Sounds like we're going to talk about food. We almost never really do except for <laughs> the question. Wait, 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 wait. Did you say it's not about, food? we haven't mentioned food at all. No. <laughs> Why is it called Everybody Loves Pudding? Uh, because it's something that <laughs> the, the show is meant to promote things that you love, the things that. Oh. You love. And who doesn't love pudding? So uh, who doesn't love pudding? That's what I. Well, okay. It depends on the flavor for me. If it's chocolate pudding, no, can't do it. <laughs> no. Well, some people have problem <laughs> with bread pudding. That's uh, understandable. <laughs> so there's there's edges but it's right usually a pudding for everybody right exactly so uh, were you thinking vanilla pudding when you were when you came no, up with it no we were we were thinking of just again just a generic what makes people happy and for me right. you know, let, let's crack open some pudding we're, we're generally pretty good so right. one other thing that kind of everybody generally loves is pizza are you a pizza person i oh I am so much a pizza person. Unfortunately, they don't tell you this, but pizza doesn't exist after age 25. Uh, yeah, you didn't know that? Oh, I'm surprised you didn't notice. Yeah, no, pizza doesn't um, uh, doesn't exist after age 25 because what happens is everything on it goes here <laughs> and goes here yep. and there. Uh, so... Uh, there is, uh, by the way, I just found out there is no official release date uh, oh. yet of, of uh, Ask Me to Dance. However, um, uh, we will know in January what that date will be. Fantastic. Well, there you go. Um, but yeah, no, after after age 25, uh, the pizza just it doesn't exist anymore. And if it does, then you're just you're in trouble health wise. 
Um, so, uh, yes, pizza becomes salad after 25. Well, let's assume that you had no detrimental physical impact from pizza. Would you be a every New day York style person? Or? Every day. New York, every day. No, I'm big to Chicago every day, too. New York and Chicago every day. I would alternate Chicago and New York every day. Ah, that's a good answer. You gotta Thank love you. it. Gotta love it. <laughs> So you also, um, okay, so everybody is inspired by something different. We're, music is, is big to us because it's, again, pop culture. Um, do you have uh, a specific style of music, a specific band? Is there a music that inspires you to get into a headspace that brings you where you need to be sometimes? Uh, when yeah, you- but it depends on the scene. It depends what... what um... Yeah, I, I do, but it it really depends on is it a, are you talking about like I need to be up and like yeah or are you talking to be the, uh, yeah, like let's, uh, let's go with that let's go the the rock and karate kind of if you need to be in that kind of oh uh, then in that case it would be Aerosmith ah good choice best yeah. album best album oh god I, um. I don't have a best album. Don't have I, I, I mean, you know, I, I don't have them memorized. I just know the songs. <laughs> that, that is more than fair. I have. Yeah, uh, yeah, I know the songs. But, but I mean, Aerosmith has got it. Oh, it's a tie. Yeah. You guys, you're talking about rock and go get them. And, you know. Okay, so Aerosmith, it's a tie between Aerosmith and ACDC. Oh, that's a good one, too. Yeah. Thunderstruck. Can't go wrong with that. <laughs> uh, I, I uh, as much as I like get a grip from uh, Aerosmith, uh, yeah. I go back a little further to to Pump is probably my okay. uh, yeah. that was my introduction. That's what I was trying to remember. Thing. I was trying to remember Pump, um, but uh, but you know, get, get a grip definitely, definitely. It's got a lot of them on there. Yeah, so much good stuff. Yep. And this one's more specific to well, not really to actors. Anybody can imagine this, but are you a comic book fan at all? We tend to talk about comic books and movies and their yeah. intersection as much as anything. Yeah, I mean, I didn't, I don't have quite a, quite the love of it that, that like the fan, the fans do. Like if you're a fan of Spider-Man, you know, every, you know, yeah. no, but, but uh, yeah, I enjoy it. So if you had your chance to play any comic book based character, Ooh. who would it be? Ooh. Ooh. Nobody's ever asked me that before. Um. Oh, God. It would have to be. I, I have, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, um, and choose a villain. Well, I, I have to go with the villain. I have the uh, Green Goblin. Yeah, that's that's a. There's so much, uh, so much to work with with that one. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, but primarily just because of the platform. I like the, I like the, I like the flying around on the platform. I like now that they have it for real, I'm gonna stalk that guy. I'm gonna <laughs> find him, <laughs> and I'm gonna get my own. Damn it! <laughs> can you, can you also design for me the pumpkin bombs? I need them to go with it. <laughs> but, well, I want to thank you so much for coming on and taking the time to to speak with a, a, a fanboy of of a thousand level for for your previous work thank um you. thank you if somebody were to want to follow you to find out what you were doing at any given mm-hmm. time what at are the gabriel best jared it's going to be the simplest thing in the world just my name at gabriel jared for for instagram and everything i have snapchat and, uh, yeah i do um, and what else uh, yeah uh, uh, facebook i got a fan page so just find me there yeah, if, you, if you could smell my name, you can find. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> I, I would hope so. It seems fairly simple to most people. Two R's, one T. No, right. you would think it would be simple, but no. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's 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 the it's it's just an indictment of the educational system. Yes. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's it. Blame other people. <laughs> Don't forget to check out uh, when it comes out, thir- uh, uh, ask me to dance and bring on the dancing horses. Uh, when we have the release dates. And the- when you have okay, the when release date. Out now, you can watch that. That's, that's right. And and fully enjoy the, the wonder stroke that is real genius. If you haven't seen it, listeners, it is an absolute gem. Uh, thank you again very much for your time. Of course. Thank you. Thank you for having me.